Um, so thank you everyone for joining. My name is Nicole Weber and I'm the director of ProWash. ProWash is funded by USAID Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance and we work on capacity strengthening, learning and operational research for any partners who are implementing water activities or sanitation or hygiene activities as part of multi-sectoral food security programming. We are so excited to see you here today as this is part of our kickoff of our WASH system strengthening work that we are undertaking in partnership with Water for People and IRC WASH. We are very excited for this broader system strengthening work that we will be supporting partners on. Uh, this will include the training that we'll be talking about today, but we'll also have some opportunities for partners, selected partners to receive some one-on-one -on -one coaching and tool deployment later on in the year that can help um, partners take a really strong systems approach in their WASH activities as part of their food security programming. Uh, so with that, I encourage you, if you haven't yet had a chance to, to introduce yourself in the box, tell us who you are, where you're calling in from today. And I'd like to take a moment to introduce my colleagues on the line, Ellen Water Walter, who is with IRC WASH, and Laura Burns with Water for People. I'm gonna turn it over now to Ellen, who will continue introductions and take it forward. Great, thank you so much, Nicole. Um, hello, everyone, um, welcome. It's great to um, have you all here. Um, I'm excited um, because um, I come from a background of public health and um, and really get excited about um, the system and how systems interact with other systems. And that's um, difficult sometimes to define. So we're gonna um, we're going to um, learn a little bit about system strengthening for wash um, through some interactive um, activities and tools. So very excited. Um, Laura, I don't know if you just want to say hello really quick um, to everybody. Hi everyone, it's wonderful to be here with you. My name is Laura Burns and I work with Water for People. Great. So, um, so if you haven't already, um, as Nicole mentioned, please type your name and your organization in the chat. And um, we are going to, um, throughout our hour together today, um, we're gonna start off with a game. Um, we're excited. Um, Sometimes it gets a bit tedious to be just on webinars with people talking at you. So I, we felt like there's an opportunity and an interactive way to learn all about and to test your knowledge on WASH systems. Um, and so um, if you can, please go to kahoot.it. So that's www.kahoot.it. You can do that from a mobile phone or you can do that um, on your computer. And then um, I'm going to share my screen and soon you will see a pin, a game pin that you'll enter and you'll create a name for yourself. That can be your name or you can choose any name that you want. Um, you feel free to be creative and then um, we'll get started with the game. So um, Nicole, if you'll stop sharing your screen and I will share mine. Um, Great, so, um, so if everyone can go to kahoot.it and type in this pin 205-0882 um, and we'll start to um, have players join. So please start. Great, we've already got one person on board. We'll wait for some more um, and then we'll start the game. I think, um, let's see if I play music, see if you can hear that. I don't know if I need to share my audio too. The music is less important. So if you don't hear it, that's okay. But please continue to enter, um, enter into the game and we will 
get started in just one second. We'll, I will get everybody to, um, as many people that want to join, you will see the questions in the answers on the screen. Um, and so if for some reason um, you um, don't wanna play, but you just wanna observe and learn, that's also fine. And for Nicole and Laura, if for some reason you, I can't see you guys anymore. And so if for some reason there's something in the chat um, that you want to do, please just unmute yourself and let me know. Sounds good. So far, all good. Great. All right. We're going to take just another minute here. Um, again, you can go the websites here to www.kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T and enter 2050882 for the game pin. We've got nine people who've joined us. And we are going to go ahead and start the game, but I think more people can still join um, even after the game has started. So here we go. Oh, we got another couple of people. Wait, like 30 more seconds to make sure everybody can get on who wants to play. All right, so let's get started. So this is the wash systems quiz. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose um, at, for this first one, um, where are you participating from? So please type your answers. So type your, there should be a box for you to type your answers in. You have 10 more seconds. All right, we have all over the world represented. Um, I like my, my house in DC, that's great. Nepal, the Philippines, Kenya, Madrid. Um, so a little bit of everywhere, that's great. All right, moving on to the next question. So what types of words do you associate with um, WASH systems? So, any words that come to mind that you think relate to WASH systems, you can type in as many, please type your answers in the box that's provided. Five seconds to go. Great. So complicated, yes, governance, washing schools, financing, excellent, all really good um, types of um, words that, that are associated with the WASH system. And so we'll go to the next one. Um, so here we have a poll. So we want you, we want to know what experience do you have with WASH system strengthening? You don't have any experience, you understand the concepts. So no experience is um, in, you would choose the red box. Understanding the concepts, but haven't applied them is blue. The knowledge of some application is um, yellow and systems expert is green. Good, so we have quite a variety um, of people. Um, so no systems experts, but soon enough, maybe we'll get you there. So the next question, which is not an essential building block for WASH system strengthening? Red is monitoring, finance is blue, dance is yellow, and regulation and accountability is green. 
So choose the color um, that you think goes with the answer. Oh, good. Everybody was great. And the majority of folks said dance. So that's good. Um, all of the other um, answers are part of the nine building blocks that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Oh, nice. So I think it's maybe Jason, but I'm not sure, um, who is in the lead. Great job. So moving to the next one. So a balance of power is needed between which of the following for an effective wash system? The red answer is service user. The blue answer is service provider. The yellow answer is the service authority or regulator. And the green answer is all of the above. And the correct answer that everybody got is all of the above. It's really important that the power exists among all three of those different entities when talking about the system. So, ah, we had a couple people move up, some tied scores there, excellent, let's keep going. So true or false, the key to managing demographic, economic and environmental change is building resilience and adaptive capacity. Is that true or false? And that is true. And everybody got it right. Nice job. Let's see. Oh, Joe is in the lead. Excellent. Let's keep going. A good framework for water resources management operates by, the, for the red, uh, protecting water quality from pollution, blue, coordinating and controlling the demands of the different user groups, yellow, managing water abstraction to protect supply, or green, all of the above. And the correct answer, yes, is green, all of the above. All of those different aspects are really important to, for water resources management. Let's see, oh, Quatch moved up, excellent. And has got a little, um, is on fire here, um, that's awesome. So moving on to the next question. Building, maintaining and operating wash infrastructure is at the heart of delivering effective wash services. So the red answer is yes, it's the most important building block. The blue answer is yes, when accompanied by other building blocks. The yellow is yes, this should always be the first entry point to strengthen the system. Or green, no, infrastructure is not as important as it used to be. All right, yes, the correct answer is the blue. It's when accompanied by other building blocks. So infrastructure is extremely important. It is at the heart of delivering services, but uh, can, only be, um, can only be done when paired with other building blocks to improve the system. Great, let's see where we are. Um, excellent, Malik moved up, wonderful. All right, true or false, it is important to monitor wash services and the strength of wash systems. Is that true or false? Yes, everyone was correct, it is true. Oftentimes this measuring and monitoring the strength of the system often gets left out and we only monitor wash services and sometimes that's not always very good either. So 
good to monitor and to think about how we monitor and have a framework for monitoring for COVID. So let's see. Oh, Malik is still in the lead. Excellent. Next. So true or false, collecting timely data is essential for managing daily service delivery, but isn't needed for decision making. Is that true or false? Yes, correct, that is false. We want to make sure that any information um, that's collected through monitoring of any kind or through independent surveys is always being used, not only for daily service delivery um, and the day-to-day -day activities related to managing service delivery, but it is also being used for decision-making at um, a local or national level. All right, let's see. Malik is still in the lead and is on fire. Joe in a close second. Awesome. All right. Who should be held accountable for wash service delivery? The red is everyone. Um, blue is decision makers. Uh, yellow is service authority. And the green is service users. Everyone, that is correct. All, everyone plays a role and it's important when you're talking about the WASH system to, uh, to identify what role you play as an individual in the WASH system, as well as maybe the entity that you're working for. Great, let's see where everybody is. Oh, Quatch moved up, nice job. Excellent, Joe still in a close second. All right, who is the referee who ensures the rules of the game are followed in WASH system strengthening. So red is the president, blue is parliament, uh, yellow is the regulatory authority, and green is the ministry responsible for WASH. Great, the answer is the regulatory authority. So all of the other people probably play a role, but uh, the referee or the one responsible um, to set the rules and enforce them um, and the regulatory authority sets the rules of the game um, and the game being the, the wash system um, and, and wash service delivery. Great, next, ah, Joe moved up. Excellent, with Quach and Malik close behind, but Aqua's there, not far, not far behind. We've got, this is a close game here. We're almost there. Money for service delivery can come from a variety of sources, including red is tariffs, um, blue is taxes, yellow is transfers, and green is all of the above. Yes, green, all of the above. Tariffs, taxes, and transfers are all extremely important. And when we get into the course, you'll be able to know a little bit more about what those different um, sources of, um, of uh, finance include. Great, let's see where we are. Watch moved up. Awesome, doing a great job, everybody. We're almost there, two more questions. Which plans are not accompanied by realist, uh, sorry, wash plans are not accompanied by realistic budgets and are merely wish lists and are likely, unlikely to be achieved. Is that true or false? Great, so that is true, that it is unlikely that the full plan will be achieved if it doesn't have a realistic budget associated to it. 
Um, and so we'll talk about that at a later point in time as part of the course. So let's see where we are. Oh, Malik moved back up. Uh, and Aqua in a close second. Excellent. Last question. What are the common challenges when applying system strengthening approaches? So the red is government continuity. Blue is implementation and scale. Yellow is capacity gaps. And green is all of the above. Great, all of the above, yes. And there are many more challenges that are not included in this list of three, um, and we will talk about those later. But thank you, everybody. Let's see um, who came out first in third place, Aqua. Excellent, nice job. In second place, KG. And in first place, dun dun, dun Malik, nice job, all right. Well, I am going to stop sharing my screen and we will go back to the presentation. But congratulations, Malik. Great. So um, at this point, um, we want to do an introduction to um, the, into WASH systems. So getting a little bit more information um, about um, the different building blocks. So each of the questions um, related to a different building block um, during the game. So thank you to everyone who played. That was great. Um, so uh, over, um, if we can bring the game up and then um, we've got a short presentation after that and then we'll open um, it up for questions. taking a system strengthening approach. Water, sanitation, and hygiene service delivery depends on many linked elements driven by social, financial, cultural, and political dynamics. A system strengthening approach recognizes this complexity and understands that wash services do not exist in isolation. We use the term wash system to refer to whatever helps or hinders the delivery of wash. This can range from masons and mechanics to national policies and budgets. To simplify this complex network of variables, we've broken them down into nine manageable parts or building blocks. Policy and legislation, institutions, planning, monitoring, regulation and accountability, infrastructure, finance, water resources management, and learning and adaptation. These are the nine building blocks of the WASH system. Together, they form the foundation of WASH service delivery. And rather than fitting neatly on top of each other, like bricks on a wall, think of them as dynamic, interactive, and overlapping elements. Lasting change cannot happen without all the building blocks in place. Fortunately, their interconnectedness means that strengthening one building block can enhance others. Achieving universal wash services is not an easy undertaking, but a system strengthening approach ensures that every advancement we make improves the overall system. We all have a role to play. What is yours? Great. Excellent. So we're going to go a little bit into some details um, about the um, uh, around the building blocks um, and to give you an overview of the wash system. Um, so as was said in the video, there are actors and factors, um, actors and behaviors. So individuals as well as government entities um, that then um, um, that are part of the system and then the factors and the functions. And um, as we know and we heard in the video, WASH service delivery takes place in a complex socio-technical system. 
Next slide. So again, there are nine different building blocks. Policy and legislation is one, um, and that includes things like sector policies and strategies, the legal frameworks, as well as the norms and the standards um, that are needed in order um, to lay the foundation um, for application um, at multiple levels within the country. Institutions play a key role um, that both around coordination um, and the roles and responsibilities of the individuals and the institutions themselves um, that are responsible for service delivery. Um, it also talks, the institution building block also talks about capacity um, and the sector mechanisms that exist to build that capacity. Infrastructure um, includes the development of infrastructure, so building things, but also around operations and maintenance, asset management, and it, again, the roles of who's responsible for infrastructure. So each of the building blocks has the factors, so the things associated with it, as well as um, the actors or the people that are involved in that building block. Um, monitoring is another building block, which talks about monitoring frameworks um, and um, how those um, lead to routine implementation of data and information collection, looking at service levels, and it links to the policy and legislation and other building blocks around regulation and accountability um, when you talk about the use of data. Planning um, refers to the planning not only of um, infrastructure or general planning processes that take place, um, but also around the financial planning um, and the capacity and the frameworks that exist for planning, um, including the identification of national planning processes and how those trickle down um, to local planning processes. Um, finance is another building block. Those are financial flows and the responsibilities of, um, of who um, uh, deals with those financial flows and how those processes take place. Frameworks um, around life cycle costing and um, being able to identify um, the source of financing. So particularly talking about the three T's that were mentioned, tariffs um, and taxes and transfers, um, and where does the responsibility lie for those funding flows. Um, additionally, there's regulation and accountability. Um, those are accountability mechanisms, regulatory frameworks, um, and the capacity of individuals um, at all levels to hold everyone accountable. So not only holding government accountable or the service authorities who are responsible, um, but also taking a look at ourselves and our own um, participation in the system. Water resources management deals with the allocation and management of water resources from extra, ab, uh, abstraction to water quality um, and how to coordinate that um, among different um, actors within, that are responsible, particularly the administrative, um, uh, the administrative barriers or the administrative per, um, perspectives. And then the last is learning and adaptation, um, which looks at the capacity and the frameworks um, to capture the feedback and the lessons learned, um, and then taking that back into the mix for um, and adapting the various building blocks, but also taking that information um, to national level, for example, joint sector reviews and other opportunities to learn and adapt along the way. Next slide. So um, there are a couple of diagrams here, but the bottom diagram is around um, the full system and the processes related to sanitation um, from capture to containment to emptying, transport, treatment, and safe, re, um, safe reuse and disposal, that each of the aspects and the building blocks apply to the different um, uh, process or the different um, uh, steps in the process for um, full sanitation service delivery. The diagram on the top talks about the different um, actors and factors 
that um, are intertwined, that it's not just um, a linear um, perspective or the building blocks don't stand alone, but there's interaction with all of them. And so we know that WASH services are delivered by WASH systems. Next slide. So how can this apply to you? I think we've received a lot of questions over time um, that um, systems approaches um, uh, uh, would need to be significantly adapted to apply um, in some of the, the RIFSA contexts in the context in which you're working. And so um, one of the aspects, um, and we'll talk about the course in just a minute, but one of the aspects that we wanted to, to highlight is that system strengthening can really be applied in, in a variety of different contexts. Um, including very rural and fragile contexts. We work with a lot of partners who have a lot of experience applying them in these other contexts that we'll be bringing to, um, be bringing to the course. Um, the components of, the, of system strengthening are useful in other sectors beyond WASH. So although we're starting with this lens and, and the presentation that we've had so far is really talking about WASH system strengthening, um, as was in the slide that looked at the building blocks, the WASH system sits within a larger political economy of which there are multiple other systems. The two mentioned there were health and education, but actually the food security um, or nutrition um, or other types of um, sectors, um, uh, all, all of those systems need to be working together. So the systems um, strengthening approaches can be applied in a variety of contexts. Um, and in rural contexts where system strengthening isn't necessarily possible, there are concepts and um, different aspects um, that can be applied. Next slide. So what's next? Um, so currently we've been doing consultation sessions and, uh, and um, aligning the course um, uh, with um, the food security work and making sure that it applies to the context in which you are all working. Um, clearly we're all on a webinar today, but two things we wanted to point out is that the um, deadline for the registration for the course, and we'll explain what's entailed in the course in just a moment, um, is July 9th. And the course itself takes place um, the 20th to the 29th of July. Next slide. So training the wash systems. And I think Nicole, let's, um, we can skip the video for now um, and instead um, make sure we have extra time for questions. But I'm gonna go over what the Wash Systems Academy is um, because there is this opportunity for all of you to participate in um, an adapted training of the Wash Systems Academy um, basic course. So the Wash Systems Academy itself is an online learning platform that was developed to empower professionals around the world with knowledge um, and tools that they need to create lasting WASH services for all. So an overview of the course, next slide. So the WASH Systems Academy blended learning course, which is what will be offered to all of you. Um, uh, combines the content from the existing WASH Systems Academy um, introductory course and basic course with the content that's relevant for all of you. The blended component of it refers to a combination of facilitated and self-guided sessions. Um, and this, the online course will be a total of eight hours um, with opening and closing webinars as part of that. To come and you'll have 10 days in which you can complete it. The course um, is on an interactive platform. Um, there are six different sessions, which we'll provide an outline for in a second. Um, and it contains a mix of different types of activities. So there's forums for discussion, there are quizzes, there are short text, videos, podcasts, animation, and also opportunities to learn more. So links to other types of resources where you can learn more about a specific topic. Um, that the, the way that the, the academy is set up 
um, is to also interact um, or to provide um, space for different types of learning that takes place. Um, so office hours um, will be provided by the course facilitators, which will provide an opportunity for both logistical questions, but as well as questions around systems thinking and application to your work. Um, and so um, we, there was a question I saw in the chat about a certificate. We will be providing a certificate. In order to receive the certificate, there is a quiz at the end um, to make sure that we know that, um, that you've learned something along the way. So, um, but that, that will be offered. Um, and there are other courses that are offered by the Academy, but this particular course has been um, adapted specifically to apply to the RIFSA context. Um, next slide. So the course makeup, there will be an introductory webinar on the 20th of July, which will be a facilitated webinar um, that will provide an opportunity um, for you to meet the others taking the course um, and to learn more again about how this can be applied um, a bit in, in the context in which you work and, and background information. And then um, there is a welcome um, session and then it gets into the content sessions. One is on um, an introduction to the WASH Systems Academy. Um, one is about broken pumps to lasting services. So the concepts around um, service delivery and WASH service delivery. The next session covers um, the WASH system strengthening. What do we mean when we say WASH system strengthening? What do we mean um, by each of the building blocks. We've given you an overview today, but it will go more in depth. Um, WASH um, is a service. And so how, what is the link between system strengthening and service delivery? And then it's more about, um, it's, it's about more than safe water. So looking at um, aspects of sanitation and hygiene and how systems approaches are applied in those contexts. And then the roadmaps to sustainable services. Um, which talks about how you can be, again, applying that. So the sessions from the welcome to session six are all self-guided, which means that you can go onto the system anytime that you'd like and complete them in the time that works for you. Um, knowing that people are joining um, this course from different um, geographic areas, we wanted to make sure that you are able to work in whatever time zone is most convenient for you um, and, um, and to go at your own pace. And then finally, um, there will be an opportunity to share um, things that you've learned um, with uh, the others who are also taking the course. Um, and so there will be a closing webinar on the 29th of July, um, which will also be facilitated. And we'll talk specifically about the context in. Um, and things that you've learned on how you can be applying this in your own, um, your own programs. Next slide. So um, we would like you to register for the course, of, of course. Um, we, this was meant to be a teaser um, and to get you excited about learning more about WASH system strengthening um, and how it could be applied in your context. Um, we will be sharing the presentation afterwards, but I want to take a moment now to just open questions. We've got about um, 20 minutes here and before we close, um, but if anyone has any questions, um, you can type them in the chat um, or you can, um, you can raise your hand and we can un you can unmute yourself. Um, so this could be questions about system strengthening, about the course itself. Um, about anything. So one thing that I didn't mention um, is that the course um, will be offered in French as well. So for those that, um, uh, although they may speak English, would prefer to take the course in French, that will be offered in September. Um, and we will be doing um, promotion for the French version of the course, which is the same content, just translated. Um, great. 
So it looks like we have a question from Bestin. If you would like to unmute, you can ask away. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I have a question of, you know, according to uh, UN information from 2021 20, to 2030, uh, I think the world will facing the, the climate change, especially drought. Uh, also, in my country, Iraq, Kurdistan region, Iraq, and uh, the current year we are facing like severe uh, drought. Uh, that the content of the training is could be applied for the current situation. I mean, climate change and drought. Yes, that that's a great question. Um, so you were talking about like whether or not that would apply um, to the context in which you're working, which is in a severe drought um, situation. Um, there are aspects of, um, of each of the different building blocks that can apply in different contexts. So I think um, the, it won't give you every tool possible, but it will give you um, some ways to be thinking about um, applying systems approaches in the context in which you're working. So it can be very, the course is meant to be adapted to the context in which you're working. And I think um, we've, we've heard a lot from different partners um, about um, particularly very rural context. So um, we will also add to the kind of context that we need to address um, places that um, might be in severe drought or have climate um, issues. We'll, we'll kind of add that to the mix. Any other questions? Great. Sure, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for organizing this teaser. I think it has come at the right time. Uh, I'm calling, I'm participating from Kenya. And will there be another program or is it just this introduction after the course? Will you also scale it up to another level? And uh, if it will be scaled up to another level, I will suggest that uh, because WASH is something very important, but if we go to any university, especially in Kenya, you will find that it is not being offered as a course. Is it possible that we partner with the learning institutions here so that we spread this knowledge to other people who are still struggling to get this knowledge. Great, thanks, Paul. That's a, that's a great question. Um, so we, um, any partners that you are working with, um, uh, including um, different university institutions are all encouraged to take this course. Um, the WASH Systems Academy um, in general has also a variety of courses that are open um, to anyone at any time, um, and they're all free. So this course is free and is adapted specifically to a, a, a RIFSA context, um, but um, there is opportunities, again, this, there's not a limit necessarily to the number of people who can take the course. Um, so we encourage not only you and maybe members of your team, but partner organizations, including government, um, government officials that you might work with at um, local or national level that you think would benefit from this information um, to register and to take the course. So Paul, I hope that I'm, I'm happy to follow up with you also on the other op opportunities for, um, for courses um, that, are, that are offered for free um, that could be for universities as well. Hello. Great. Yes, please go Hello. ahead. Sister Amber Godfrey from Uganda. Uh, my question is this course specifically for those who are uh, specifically engaged in wash sector only or it's open to everyone? It's a great question. The course is open to everyone. Um, uh, we, it, it will come from a perspective of um, the WASH system, 
but the concepts and the building blocks do apply to those that are working in other sectors, whether that be health, um, food security, um, education, um, that the, the concepts and the approaches around strengthening the system um, don't, do not just apply to, to WASH, they apply to health systems and others. So it's open to, to anyone. Other questions? There is no fee for the course. Great question. So this court, this adapted course is free um, as well as other courses um, provided under the WASH Systems Academy are also free. Um, yes, I saw another hand, please go ahead. Uh, I have a, a, another question, uh, Biaston from Kurdistan. Uh, uh, what's the difference between like uh, WHO's because building blocks and with with the current uh, building block? I mean, I mean, yeah, wash uh, things in building block. Uh, thank you. Great, and I just, I'm gonna to try to make sure I, I understood your question. You were talking about um, other entities have different building blocks. Um, so um, it was that your question that there are other, like WHO has different types of building blocks? No, no, uh, I mean, uh, WHO have six building block for thinking health system. I think uh, if I'm not wrong, this building blocks uh, you spoke about you, uh, you are speaking about, I think it's the same building block adapted with the WASH system. Am I right or not? Just for confirmation. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so so the building block I think that you're talking about, so sustainability kind of cuts across all of the building blocks. Um, and so, yes, I mean, I think that, um, that you'll see um, the WHO building block that you're referring to um, as kind of part of the content. It won't necessarily be called that building block, but you'll see that in the, the different building blocks in the content of the course. And if you have any links to that, we can we can check it out to make sure that it's, um, yeah, that we, we address that as well. Okay, I will share it. Thank you, because <laughs> I'm studying master degree and also public health, same about your background. Yeah, I will share it, yeah. Thank you. Great, yeah. Wonderful. If you can, yeah, any any links or anything that you can share, we'll we'll take a look at that as well. Um, there was a question from Godfrey. It looks like um, can anyone use the course or a certificate of the course to upgrade to another program or course? Great. So so this particular course um, is um, not necessarily the first in a series, but at the moment, all of the courses online. Um, that are offered by the Watch Systems Academy are open and you can take any of them. I do encourage though, um, taking this course first before you, a lot of the other courses are um, specific to, um, yeah. like they go more in depth. So it would be useful, I think, to have the basis of this course or you take something else, but there's no requirement that you have to complete this course and have a certificate or taking something else. But I think it would be useful to provide that, that foundation and background. So Godfrey, I hope that answers your question. Yes, you have answered my question. Okay, great. And Yes. Oh, and there was ahead. another question in the chat that I'm working to respond to in the chat, but it was about the timing of the course, since there are participants from all over the globe. And wondering if you want me to tackle that one or if you want to. No, please go ahead. Sure. So we're planning to offer uh, the opening and closing webinars in the morning hours in the United States, which would be the afternoon and evening hours in a lot of the countries where you're all working. And we'll send the details on that shortly. And then for the office hours, so for the rest of the course, you'll of course be working at it at your own pace, but then office hours will be established in the afternoon hours of most country programs as well. 
Great, thanks, Laura. Uh, any other questions? There's another question in the chat about um, registration. Some of us registered earlier. If you specifically registered for the course earlier and not this opening webinar, then you do not need to repeat that registration and you will receive um, come mid-July more information about your login information. Yes. Great. Other, any other questions? They can be not only about the course, but also about system strengthening, if you have any. Um, no, so, so to clarify, the registration is needs to be done by July 9th. So you need to have gone online with the link and register for the course. And then the course will actually take place over a 10 day window with an opening webinar um, in fact, um, can you go back the slide, um, if you don't mind, Nicole? So the course itself, um, the eight hours is not all in one day. There is an hour and a half or so, maybe an hour, where we're still finalizing the opening webinar, but there is a opening webinar um, on the on the 20th of July that will be held for everybody all at the same time. And then over the course of July 21st through the 28th, whenever is convenient, you could do it all in one day or you could do it, you know, an hour every day. Um, you could do it, you know, pick two days where you want to spend more time um, doing that. But the whole course should take you about eight hours and you have about a week or more to, to do that. And then everyone will convene one final time for the closing webinar on the 29th of July. Yes, concerning the, the duration of, of, of the course per day, I must yes. what happens if I don't complete the eight hours? Am I canceled or should I go tune no. to another session? <laughs> no, so, so if the eight hours, it's not timed. So it is up to you, however long, um, sometimes, so for example, when I take a course, um, I like to read every small detail. And so it may take me longer. You just need to complete um, the course in the time frame that so it, within those 10 days, so it's not, I would pay attention less to the eight hours. That's an approximation um, so that you can block off time in your calendar to do that. Now, if during between July 20th and July 29th, you participate in both webinars, but you don't complete the course, then we need to figure out how that works. And if there's an option for you know, you have until such an, you know, until a later date to complete after that. So the course though is only being offered, this particular course is only being offered once. So if you don't complete it in the window, then um, you would need to take probably a different course. Um, but we'll look at if for some reason someone needs more time um, beyond um, the 29th, we'll have to investigate um, what to do about that. We don't have an answer sorry. for you right now. Yeah. Sorry, I raised that question because in my country, you have internet issues. Today, you yes. are on tomorrow, the internet is off. So uh, I think I think you have answered my question well. Thank you. Great. Yes, the, the purpose of having the self-guided um, parts of the course is because we know that due to time zones, people will want to do it in the morning or in the afternoon or at some other time of their day. Um, but also if we don't want to, if for some reason internet is down for two days, that you still have the option on other days to complete that work. So we recognize that um, it can be difficult to do things online. And so we hope that this will accommodate. Um, Laura, I see a bunch of, I haven't been able to follow everything in the chat. Is there anything that we want to address out loud? 
Yeah, um, I think just further clarification, perhaps on the registration. So if you registered just for this launch webinar, you still do need to register using the link I've shared in the chat a couple of times for the course. Uh, there were some questions about if they participated in this or if um, others have not participated in this webinar, if they still can participate in the course. And yes, we're happy for uh, as many people as possible to join the course. Um, and then just a clarification that we've used and I've used in the chat interchangeably registration form and info form. Um, and those are the same or interest form and those are the same forms. I would say if you if you are unsure whether or not you are actually registered for the course and you think you may have done it but you haven't, it's okay to register twice. We would prefer you register twice than not register at all thinking you did register. So if there if you are questioning whether or not you filled out the the interest slash registration form already, just click on the link and do it again. Um, if you know you've already done it, then you don't need to do it again. Um, and I see that there was a question about um, the course being translated into French, but not Spanish. Um, and so at the moment, we have the course in French, but we do not have the course in Spanish. Um, it's something that we are trying to figure out how to um, get courses, not this particular course, but in general, um, courses for the academy translated. Um, but as I'm sure um, everyone knows it's um, it can be difficult um, to to make that happen, and so we're it's something that we um, we want to do, but have not been able to do yet. Um, so the next steps. Um, so if you can go to the final slide, um, if you haven't already, um, please register for the course. Um, and once you register. Um, after July 9th, we will be sending out confirmation of everyone's registration as well as login information to get you set up on the Watch Systems Academy platform. So you will know if you don't receive something um, after that, please feel free um, to email um, any of us um, and we can put contact information um, uh, in the chat. But um, if you have any questions, but I just wanted to take the time to thank you for joining today. We hope you had a little bit of fun and something a little bit different than um, the typical webinar. And, um, and if you have any additional questions, um, please let us know, but we would love to, um, yes. So you can email prowash at savechildren.org. Um, with any questions or issues with your with registration or any questions that you have along the way. Um, so I'm going to turn back over to Nicole really quick to see if she has any closing remarks and then um, our time together is up. So thank you very much for participating today. Great, thank you so much. I just really want to thank everyone for your active participation. I want to thank Ellen and Laura for organizing today's webinar. We're going to be so excited to see many of you in the training starting in July. Uh, and for those of you who prefer to learn in French, we look forward to seeing you um, later this year as well. So thanks again and feel free to reach out if you have any follow-up questions. Thank you so much.